Okay, hello there, you guys. Welcome to episode, uh, what are we on? 29, <laughs> I think that's right. Uh, I'm Theo, your host, and yeah, let's kick it off. I wanna quickly amend something though. Wait, hold up. Yeah, I wanna amend something. Uh, and that was in the previous episode, I was saying that I, you know, I'm not musically inclined, and I, I, I'm not super familiar with the furry musicians in the furry space, but I totally overlooked and, you know, in the moment I didn't think of him, but I totally, I had an interview with a DJ and a person who's hardcore into making music and promoting music and that's kind of his livelihood and that's nonstop pop. Uh, so I just really wanted to quickly bring him up because I interviewed him, he's a super awesome dude, and I just wanted to plug him real quick, that's Nonstop Pup, you can check him out over on Twitter, that's N-O-N-S-T-O-P-P-U-P, Nonstop Pup. Uh, his caps lock key might be broken because he only types in caps, but so don't worry, he's not screaming at you, he's screaming at everybody. That's nonstop pup. So go check out his music and his work and the stuff that he wants to promote, uh, like Thrive or Die, he's got a lot of cool merch. So. Yeah, just wanted to share that really quick, and we can get on with the episode. Okay, I, I don't know now if I want to start off this particular episode with something bad, or may maybe it's a bit soapboxy or ranty, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And that's the Sonic 2 movie. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I have seen the first one when it first came out in theaters, like, basically tw late 2019, I think. And I had overall okay impressions of like how uh, the studio handled making a video game movie from a pretty big franchise like Sonic. So uh, for a kid's movie and just a movie that I could enjoy overall as an adult, the first movie I would say was a solid 5 out of 10. Like it's not bad, it wasn't great, but it was something that I wouldn't mind watching maybe, you know, if it's casually on TV again or just to watch the fun bits and action scenes. Uh, so it was good for that. And for a first attempt to, and well, actually no, their first attempt, their IP was really horrible looking. They tried to do that over realistic CGI spin that Hollywood does on all of their animated movies. I don't know why, um, but they amended that and then they brought it back around with, I think uh, another artist came on that tweaked an appropriately designed Sonic in a more lovable and true to fashion way. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they <laughs> didn't, they didn't abide by his character and his setting that he's in. So everything that they put Sonic through in the first movie was kind of like the typical oh, he, here's this cartoon character in the human world and he faces human problems now because there has to be a family focused around him that are humans because Sonic is totally not an alien or something that has different problems and universe rules that apply to only him and it, because we're humans watching a cartoon movie, it has to be human-centric. Uh, yeah, so apparently the... I, I want... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of like jazzed on coffee right now, but... I want to say that my my first impressions of the Sonic 2 movie seemed positive. All of the trailers, of course, want to portray the game the game movie in the best light, so they made really good promotional art for the trailer, and it had a, a throwback to the original Sonic 2 video game with Robotnik. Uh, oh, is it Robotnik or Eggman? I hope I'm not... Uh, I always conflate the two. But yeah, it had the antagonist you know, with his hand over the number two logo and it's Sonic and Tails in the foreground. And like everyone was so hyped from seeing that. And it's like, wow, they put so much thought, love and care into the movie. So this is gonna be great. You know, it's gonna be maybe some fan service here and there, but it's gonna be Sonic as a video game movie that's gonna be done justice, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> not the case. I have, again, I've yet to see the movie and I've been always skeptical about video game to Hollywood movies anyway. Uh, and I, I listened to a few reviews. Uh, one in particular was from Arlo, the video game reviewing monster. Uh, he looks like the Cookie Monster if you haven't seen him before. He's a he's a pretty cool dude. I, I like uh, his stuff and his style of talking casually about video games and stuff is... You know, it, it's it's pretty well thought out, and I think justified it in a lot of cases. So um, I take his word for more than a grain of salt. I, I think that it's usually well thought of and fair in judgment. And uh, considering that movies these days are basically like 20 plus dollar experiences for a ticket, not including the absurd amount of money that you spend on food, like 
just popcorn these days that is like ten dollars and up it's ridiculous so i think it's well justified to consider that when you're going to be purchasing a ticket for a movie that's terrible uh and that was basically his overall estimate of the sonic movie too uh it wasn't great because it felt like it was a very targeted <laughs> sort of ad campaign uh for something that you could feel was written in a way to target kids as a kid's movie for the sake of making money off of a well-known IP. And I don't know why Sonic as an IP, it made me think, Sonic as a character and the characters designed in the Sonic universe, I think are really great and really crea uh, creative and poppy and overall just really likable and enjoyable. But that doesn't mean that all of his franchises from his video games to his movie content i can't speak to his show because i haven't seen that too often um but i know that there is also like a side comic and stuff uh in like magazines it might have credit to it it might have good writing there but i haven't experienced that uh but for the stuff that i've seen generally that's really popular from sonic i don't know why it's never caught on with me it's always been very mediocre at best to just very poor like how does a game character that's beloved have such crappy quality in in all that his media exists in in like in any form <laughs> like it's okay it's got great music i'll give it that the soundtracks are always fun and really poppy and quick and just i would say fit sonic really well for what he does he's a hedgehog that goes fast uh, but nobody's really put the love and care in to crafting his universe and really molding it into something that I think that I wanted to see continue. Everything that he sort of jump-started in, I, I've just waited for it, for that thing to end. And I'm like, I don't need any more of this. I can't finish this. Uh, have a good day. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, circling back to Arlo's review and hearing how disappointed he was within the Sonic 2 movie about how so many scenes were just put into the movie that could have been cut out that really had no real relevance to what was happening to the actual plot line. It felt like that there was a lot of content that the writers and producers put in just for the sake of generating fun bucks. Like, they have random dance break competitions in the middle of like a bar fight scene or something like that. And again, they I remember from the first movie, they also have a bar fight scene. So why did they repeat that concept? Just because it did well maybe in the first movie and they didn't feel the need to be creative and work around a new situation. Uh, he also mentioned that there were a lot of scenes where it felt like for them to get out of a particular situation, Sonic's speed, his ability to literally go quick and, you know, basically travel through time wasn't relevant. He couldn't zip his way out of certain situations where he could literally do that. It would make more sense for him to do that. And they just didn't craft anything around his abilities or his powers that would give him an actual appropriate challenge. So that was really disappointing to hear because it's like you could really play to the creativeness and the tropes of Sonic and... I don't know, his ability to experience new challenges. So uh, that was, yeah, a bit disappointing to hear. And overall, yeah, just to bring up the point that this is a big investment for what you're going to go and see in terms of like a ticket price, like $20, $30, I don't think it's worth that investment. So I'll just pass up this movie. And if anything, I think if you want to go into it for the sake of it being a kid's movie, that's perfectly fine. I, I on the other hand, sometimes just want to spend my hard-earned money on something to fund more creative, great projects like this. I want to see something that's good do better in the next franchise or in the next part two or whatever. So I think like supporting these kinds of movies just shows the stats uh, for like the Hollywood producers to just say like, hey, this did well, let's do it again. Because they're gonna, of course, beat any horse to death until it stops spitting out cash. Um, regardless though, I did see some other reviews like from GVG Gaming or Good Vibes uh, Gaming and they're true hardcore like gamers they, and they love the Sonic franchise and when they went to go see the movie, they exclaimed that it was a really fun time. So I don't discount their experience or their perspective either. And it must be, it just must be the case that I sometimes can't turn off my brain when looking at a movie or being a little bit critical of what it's doing. And maybe that's just because I'm becoming older and cynical and crotchety, but 
but I think, again, like the argument of a kid's movie being justified in what it's doing just because it's a kid's movie doesn't give it sort of nuance for adults or kids to be singled out here. Like the granted, the main audience are children, but you also have adults that grew up with the franchise that would expect you know, a little more from what they remember as a kid too, because a lot of industries are, I think, exclude, once you become an adult anyway, this is a side tangent already, but once you become an adult anyway, you're not really part of the audience that they want to target and they just forget about you. So uh, it's kind of weird there where it's like you have an old franchise that existed before these kids and you're not showing the children, especially the newer generation, what this franchise was all about and how great it actually was. It's just kind of lowering the bar again and again for every new generation until it maybe just eventually falls flat and then it never really got a good chance to gain traction to become something great. Uh, so there's that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't, <laughs> I think I got that out of my system. That was, oh God, man. Just, I was so hyped for it and I was just totally deflated and disappointed from hearing those reviews and just hearing how how exactly I was fearing that this would be handled and it was handled poorly so go see it I still want to recommend people to see it if they're diehard Sonic fans because that's great you still have content uh, from your interest that is on the big screen and I think that's worth appreciating like sometimes you could love something that's bad just because you love it so much uh, yeah. Okay, but if there is something redeemable and worth worth looking forward to within the Sonic franchise yet again, it's that uh, there was a recent reveal trailer for Sonic being open world, and they, they really didn't show much other than Sonic running through like a Breath of the Wild aesthetic type of world. So with all these games going open world, why not Sonic, right? Let's see what else he could try his hand at. And maybe fail at but oh god i hope it's gonna be good and i i think that most open worlds these days have sort of refined the formula so that it's got a really good chance not to mess this up so that might be one redeeming thing to look forward to okay <laughs> okay changing gears uh there is a small studio update that i could give you guys uh and that's the ex the entire exterior of the studio i would say is 95 percent done I did multiple coats of primer and paint on all of the trim of the windows and the door and all of the exterior walls. So if you checked out the outside of it from the update pics, it looks pretty clean and I'm very happy about that. The only minor things for the windows is that I the windows that I purchased uh, were from a like recycle center. So they were commercial windows that were decommissioned and then they were still good. So then they resell it. And I got them for really good deals for how high quality they are. They're like dual insulated uh, pane windows. So they also slide and look way more modern looking than the Jealousy windows that I had in the room. So I'm really glad I have those. And those are really good for sound dampening as well as insulation for like AC if we ever get a split system in the future. Um, so the exterior looks great. My mom, like, oh, I was at work and she just installed the door on the the studio and it's just amazing the front door looks so clean and that was another part that we got from the recycle center and it's a solid wood door and it's super heavy oh my gosh but it's perfectly in place uh, we made the frame for the door completely from scratch uh, we usually get those prefabbed and then we can install the the door frame for the door but nope my mom was like we're gonna make it so we made it out of whatever we had left <laughs> and it's perfect and then i painted over that and I gotta kind of tweak the color on the door. I'm not super happy with what color I made it. It's just beige on beige. So it just matches the exterior of the wall. So it might be nicer to do like a darker tone on the door. So I'll look into like darker paints that I could make it pop a little bit better. Um, on the inside now of the studio, the drywall is going up. So on the wall that's conjoining uh, Blarg and I's room to the studio between us, the drywall that I bought from Lowe's just went up on the the middle section of the wall. And I'll tell you what, drywall ain't cheap. And I have to just take a moment here to pause and say thank you so much to the patrons and the commissioners that have been supporting me over the months because all of that money literally went into the materials to just purchase like this exterior renovation. Like it, 
the money 100% went into it. So I really appreciate that. And it's just literally going into making more art. And this is a huge investment that I'm just very happy to have um, people help with. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to still funnel all of future Patreon funds into more materials for the office. So yeah, if you're wondering or was curious about where it's going, it's literally just going right back into art. So thank you so much. Uh, I guess I should plug the Patreon again. Yeah, it's uh, Shikokubo, S-H-I-K-O-K-U-B-O, -O, uh, over on Patreon. So if you just look up that, you could probably find a link from my Fur Affinity webpage or my Twitter. It's all probably under there. Uh, so yeah. Um, uh, the studio now on the inside, besides the drywall, uh, we have some leftover insulation. So we've been putting that in the walls to help with the sound isolation. So, uh, that would also help with the insulation for, uh, the temperature. So it'll keep the room cooler or warmer whenever. Uh, but you know, being in Hawaii, it's preferably cooler. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be warm all the time anyway. So I also got a little cheap office fan that I got for a good deal from a friend that I'm gonna put in there. Um, on the inside, we still have to put up more drywall and insulation. Uh, I'm going, I am going to be texturizing the interior of the wall because my mom helped smooth out the, uh, the inside of our room that we sort of demoed and uh, patched up with leftover drywall. Uh, I'm going to texture that over with uh, our spray gun and going to paint that again so the inside of our room can be totally finished and then we could start living in it again because Blarg and I have been sleeping for the past couple of days in our guest bedroom. So we can move back in there and then Blarg can continue his stream perfectly fine because yeah we've had to work around all of the the paper and stuff and the plastic that we've put up to prevent the room from getting super dusty so that'll be cleared up soon and then it's just going to be 100 percent back focused on just this studio and we can start doing flooring hopefully soon uh, i think we're going to be putting a mix of maybe tile for the concrete portion of the room and then we're gonna put a sort of laminate flooring that clicks into place on top of the stairs so we'll see how that comes along i'm also really kind of excited to show the feature of the stairs we've uh, modified the small staircase to have a pocket underneath for storage and the way that you get into it is from like a secret side panel that you can lift up and you can store bins and stuff of crafts under there so i'm really excited for that uh and then we'll see how echoey it gets i might get sound panels or try to find a nice shaggy carpet to help absorb the sound because it's a small space and if you're doing like podcasts you know talks like this it might sound a bit echoey so we'll see how that is and then i'll totally i can't wait to do like the first episode in that room too uh so that's the update on the studio and just because i don't think that i have a whole lot of other topics to discuss just because it's been so relatively short i haven't seen a whole lot of crazy shenanigans on twitter from the community uh other than just you know uh, great art as usual and maybe I'll take some time in a future episode to just discuss art specifically and shout out uh, some some if not like all of my favorite furry artists that would be a long episode uh, I just want to kind of cap this episode with a sort of corner of like hey what you've been playing and I want to say like a lot of games I feel like have been put on pause just because you know, I'm sort of casually playing things now just in the time that I have just before bed. So like in the 30 minutes or so just before I hit the hay, I'm just going to play something casually. So I've been on my 3DS often. Actually, no, let's talk about the titles that are currently on pause just because I feel like they deserve, you know, a set amount of time to sit down and truly enjoy and, and get into the groove of. And that's, of course, I think the biggest one, Elden Ring, that's been on pause uh, I've been sort of piggybacking off of my super powerful friends that have been showing me around and all of the secrets, and I think it's sort of sullying the amount of, I guess, enjoyment that I've been getting out of it, because I've been basically farming and grinding off of a particular area in the late game that I didn't know about that my friends showed me, and I've been getting more and more powerful, but still yet, if you don't have the skill set to maneuver and dodge enemies and you're not familiar with their mechanics you're still gonna get wrecked even though you're super high level uh but that was the last thing i did in elden ring and i think i want to continue that more later on when the office is set up and stuff that i could just sit at my computer and just get lost in in the dark fantasy world that i love so much so 
yeah, Elden Ring, like, uh, it's my favorite, I, I would say it's my favorite video game of all time so far, so I want to treat it with just a nice play session later on. Uh, I've been casually playing Kirby's Forgotten Land. I absolutely love that game. It's been reminding me so much of the GameCube era. Uh, not so much in terms of like its style or its modern features that it has now, but more so that it's like the GameCube era. It's a 3D jump to when uh, a lot of franchises were focusing more on the open world 3D vibe. Uh, so for Kirby to spend like the most amount of time since N64 to be a 2D side scroller and now fleshed out in more or less a 3D free camera controlled kind of world, uh, it's not fully uh, free camera control like Mario N64 or Odyssey or most of the other Mario games, but it's a really good attempt and a solid start at Kirby's journey into 3D that I don't think that they can go back in on now. They have to refine it and make it better and even more uh, platformy. And I think they've got a really good start. The The copy abilities, I think they've stated in an article before, was really hard to sort of flesh out when they wanted to incorporate it into a fully 3D environment and progress without really abusing abilities and balancing them in ways that felt good and the way that they incorporated evolutions to the copy abilities just gives you so much more replay value. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've been playing that casually and I got up to like the winter world. So if you've played it as well, uh, you could probably beat that game in like seven or 10 hours, I bet. But I've just been playing it here and there and I beat the first three world stages uh, and I'm on the winter world now. So I've just been taking my sweet time with that. And that's another game that I don't really want to rush and I just want to enjoy when I have time to play so. So yeah, I'm discovering more and more little bits and details that the, that the developers put love and care into that game, and I've just been loving every little ounce of it. Love Kirby. Uh, so that's on pause now too, though. Uh, I've I've been just sitting in bed now for the past couple of days playing with my 3DS, and I've been checking out some eShop stuff, trying to snag some deals there, and I don't know, I sort of just gravitated to Mario 3D Land, like the OG, one of like the, I think first year launch titles of the 3DS back in the day, like in 2017 or so. And uh, I don't know why, it's just been a solid, like just pick up and play casual game. And I guess that's why it's been suiting my play style as of late. Uh, I'm on world three now and I've never beat the game, although I've owned it for so long. Uh, so I wanted to give it its genuine go. I, I worked my way from world one a couple of weeks ago to world three now, and I'm gonna go on to world four soon. So I'm almost, I'm almost halfway through. And it's just, it's just been a genuine solid experience. Uh, it's sort of a game that you don't even have to worry about the story too much because it's like, guess what? The princess gets captured, go save her. Like there's nothing really important to really digest there. I, I try to save, side tangent, I try to save my expectations for Mario games to when they become RPGs. So when you have like, you know, the Superstar Saga or Bowser's Inside Story, that's when I really start to care about the story and the environments because they put so much love and care into those. Um, so I've been wanting to replay those on DS eventually. Uh, so I, I believe that's all I've been really doing in terms of video games. There's just also so much that came out this year and was announced. So I'm looking forward to a lot of those. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. And I think with that, we will end episode 29. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, for listening, I won't dilly-dally on further because it's been sort of a short week and not a whole lot has been happening. But as soon as like some major stuff happens, I think then I'll have something more juicy to talk about and get into. So you guys take care from wherever you are. Bye-bye. Uh,